From the Clutha district, we have the Gabrielle's Gully 150th Committee. This committee put together an incredible program of events to mark 150 years since the discovery of the first payable goldfield in New Zealand, and I welcome them to the stage now. In the late afternoon on the 25th of May, 1861, Gabriel Reed found gold in a gully just outside of Lawrence and uttered those immortal words, saw the gold shining like stars in Orion on a dark, frosty night. Gabriel Reed found his place in New Zealand history as the man that discovered the first payable gold field in New Zealand and earned an award from the Otago Provincial Council of 1,000 pound. Ladies and gentlemen, judges and fellow participants. My name is Brian Cadogan and I'm the Mayor of the Clutha District. I would like to now introduce Wayman Rowan, the Gabriel Gully's Gold Rush 150th Celebration Committee. Thank you, Brian. The diggers celebrated in 1861, as did the shopkeepers, hoteliers, ladies of the night, and the business people of Dunedin, whose bank accounts grew on the wealth from the Gabriel's Gully. The Lawrence District commemorated the Jubilee in 1911, the centennial in 1961. It was their turn to celebrate the sesquicentennial in 2011. On a fine autumn evening in March 2011, 800 people ventured up Gabriel's Gully to watch the drama of the Chapeka take its audience on a journey, from the formation of land and the precious metals through to Mary, through Mary Legend to the discovery of gold and the onset of the gold rush, the drama of the lawless gang, the hard road the Chinese miners trode, the merchants and their boom time trade, farming with its place down through the years. Finally, the vision for the future. Written by a local woman with a cast of 90, plus many willing hands behind the scenes, spent hours, hundreds of hours of rehearsing for this ambi ambitious spectacle. The official opening on the Saturday morning was marked by the arrival of trekkers and horse riders who had followed the footsteps of the original miners from Dunedin to Lawrence. Descendants of Gable Reed from Tasmania were invited guests. Gable's Gully became the stage for the weekend. In the three preceding years, hours were spent preparing the gully with local volunteers working alongside the Department of Conservation who managed the gully on behalf of the Historic Places Trust. Upgrade walking tracks, signage, and the restoration of artefacts such as the original stamping battery were completed. Truly amazing to see the usual quiet gully come to life. First, the Lawrence Lions Club erected two huge marquees, then the hijinks of the drama of the Chapeka, the stirring sounds of the bagpipes, the national anthem, and from then on it was all go. Star of the weekend was our Gold Rush Heritage Centre. In 2010, we advertised for descendants of the original mining families to display historical artefacts and fam family memorabilia in the Heritage Centre. We invited people to tell their ancestors' stories, family legends that have been handed down over generations, tales of miners, merchants and mudlarks. The Heritage Centre was a huge success with people returning on the second and third day to ensure they saw and experienced it all. Activities within the gully and the Lawrence area entertained visitors. In the gully, local school children dressed up in period costume to demonstrate old-time games. Victorian motor bike enthusiasts set up camp for the weekend with their penny farthings. The gold panning was very popular. Visitors walked amongst the gold mining relics. And they were guided tours of water races constructed by the miners to supply water from, for sluicing in the gully. True to the spirit of the diggers, activities continued into the night. The swaggers danced one night, a good old-fashioned hoedown with a local skiffle band. Sunday, a gala event, a sesquicentennial ball featured the New Zealand Army band playing. The galley came alive with ball gowns, bow ties, top hats, champagne and a packed dance floor. No one wanted to go home. And when we did, the stars in Orion were shining in the night sky just as they'd done for the miners 150 years ago. 
No celebration of Golden Lawrence be complete without including the attractions that existed in the township and surrounding areas. The Chinese, were, while successful miners, were forbidden to dwell inside the town boundaries and therefore established their own township on the outskirts, known then and today as the Chinese camp. Festivities began with a traditional Chinese welcome, firecrackers, dragon flags and a lion dance. Tents contained displays of how the Chinese miners lived and intriguing artefacts found in an archaeological dig on site. The Chinese pig oven provided, provided roast pork eaten and washed down with Emerson's beer, brewed specially to mark the occasion. The fun and games continued at Hart's Black Horse Brewery up the neighbouring gully at Weatherstones, known for its daffodil displays. Hart's provided garden walks, hospitality and entertainment well into the small hours. Also popular with visitors was guided tours, including historic buildings in Lawrence, originating from the prosperity of the gold rush. The Chepeka Goldfields Museum, the Chepeka Vintage Club Museum, and during one of the cemetery tours, one visitor found a deceased sibling she wasn't aware of. Live music, courtesy vans, combined church services, two book launches, a Targa Museum children's program, all of this before the celebrations concluded with a drama presented by the students of the Lawrence Area School. The committee felt proud that we had done justice to the Jubilee and Centennial Committees preceding us. We received untold publicity in newspapers, television and radio. We recorded and saved it all for prosperity's sake and a time capsule which we interred in the Jubilee Cairn on the 25th of May to mark the day 150 years ago. This journey began in July 2007 with a public meeting attended by 50 people. Over a period of months, a multitude of ideas was tossed around and a program of events developed. The Clutha District Council was extremely supportive from the onset with funding and assistance from staff. An event manager was employed to assist with coordination of the event and obtaining funding. The success of the weekend relied on committee members taking responsibility for individual events in conjunction with community groups and locals. So now, one year after the Sesquik celebrations, what has changed in Gables Gully? The land is better maintained. There's a walking track from the township with improved signage. But the main changes are invisible to the eye. They are in the increased profile of Gables Gully and Lawrence, the awareness of gold and its part in New Zealand's history. The visitors for the weekend who returned and the businesses they bring with them. There's the extra layer of history that's been added to the museum and the contacts made and the story is saved. The biggest success of the weekend is the effect it's had on the children. And to emphasise this, I quote from the school newsletter published just after the event. From the school's point of view, a huge vote of thanks is extended to the organising committee for allowing all of our students an opportunity to be involved in learning through living, history, living the history. The weekend provided memories that will live with our students for many years. Not only do the students gain an invaluable insight into the rich history of our district, they also learned about volunteering and how to be members of a community contributing to ensure the success of an event. The community spirit generated by the 150 is an asset of real value. Thank you.